Mate, welcome back to another Nobeds video. This is the channel where I just spout absolute crap. Welcome. So today, specifically, we're looking at review scores and particularly as to why I hate them and their simplistic nature. The simplicity is obviously the reason they're a thing. Simplistic number, you look at it, you get an idea of how a game is. For example, Forza Horizon 5, well, that's a pretty popular game. It it's blows off the charts. Every single time, Forza Horizon gets incredible scores, especially from people like IGN. In fact, Forza, Forza Horizon 5 got a 10 out of 10 from IGN with the previous installment. Masterpiece, they say. But of course, no game, realistically, is a masterpiece. I would never, ever, ever agree with that statement. Games always have issues. Games always have flaws. And that's just how games are. Ah, oh, we love them, we hate them. Video games, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, on to Forza Horizon 5. So this score is, again, it's a great game. For those of you that played it long term, you would know that this is definitely not a TED experience. For the first two months, for example, when the game actually did launch, well, it wasn't so great. The multiplayer didn't work and it was pretty much the same game as Forza Horizon 4, which again is a good game. So you'd think, okay, well, if it's pretty much the same as Forza Horizon 4, then surely it should have a same score. Um, but that unfortunately is not the case. It's a 9.6 for Forza Horizon 4, which is a little bit conflicting, considering that we ourselves agree that Forza Horizon is always quite the same game. What about Forza Horizon 3? Well, that was a 9.5. Yes, because there is all the world of difference in the 9.5 to the 9.6. Forza Horizon 4 was better than the previous game by 1.1 of a number. This is where things get confusing. So I'm looks like I'm kind of picking on IGN specifically here about their review scores. But the main reason I dislike review scores is, again, their simplistic nature is both a positive and a negative thing. Yes, it gives you an idea straight away as to what this game is. For example, the new Saints Row game, well, it's had a bit of a shaky launch. Some things like minor bugs that you kind of find in today's games in general, and, well, just game-breaking bugs in where you are unable to launch the game. That's a pretty significant bug to the point where, realistically, if you weren't able to launch the game, that's worse than a 6 out of 10. But Theo, these are reviewed by different people. That's why the numbers are different, even though they're on the same publication. Do you see the mess we're getting ourselves into here? Review scores and the, the person, it depends person to person. Each person has their own specific route they want to take. Me personally, if you forced me at gunpoint to review a game with a score, which I will not, I probably would at gunpoint, I would tell you that a five is, to me, a good game. And you're like, what? That doesn't make sense. It doesn't align with IGN. Here is the problem once more. It doesn't align, and that's fine. But when you then compare it to other publications, and if we did review scores on our website, then essentially you would take that number and go, they said Forza Horizon 5 was a five out of 10, but IGN says it's a 10 out of 10. This publication is crap. And this is where we get into that people using review scores just to, once again, run with their own ideas. They already have an idea with what the review scores should be in their head. If it's not a 10 or a 9 or an 8, which is good, apparently that's the only good scores you could possibly have <laughs> with review scores, well, then you are fanboy, and this is where we just bring in aggression for the sake of aggression. So that is why we decided over on the Nobeds when we launched the website... We just would not do review scores. If we scroll through our Dirt 5 review, you can see it's all text. Now, this does leave us in a situation where, yes, people jump to the review scores, and that is a bit of a problem, because to me as well, I would probably see, I would sum up, I would look for the summary. That's where we have an issue, because how do you do it better? How do you take the extra step to give people a wrap-up of what they need to know, but also round out the review. Usually it ends with a score and usually a little blurb. 
We could do the little blurb. We can list the positives and negatives. I've thought of many ideas, but of course I just came to the fact that if they don't want to read the review, do they really even care? Which is why we don't really bother doing it. We do a wrap up, but if you're not even gonna bother to read that, then you clearly don't actually care about the game. You're there looking for a number to throw into your fanboy sphere. This is the type of people we want to avoid, and therefore that's why when we do reviews, we don't bother with scores. Let's carry on with some more example scores then, shall we? So if we go over to IGN again, so this was Need for Speed 2015. It got a 6.3. Now, I can sit here and say, granted, yes, the game had some issues. The handling was pretty pap and it had some issues. And other than that, it was a reboot for the series, but it actually, from memory, got less points than its previous installment, which, again... This installment was a reboot, reboot that catered towards what the fan base wanted. And that's another point that's kind of a disconnect between this type of review and my channel. I don't tend to do reviews on the channel anymore, and there are a few reasons why. But what I like to do is now play the games. Ultimately, the only reason I have a platform to, to say anything is because you guys wanted to watch my content and I thought, let me post some videos on it. And then it did well, and then you guys want to watch. And so anyway, we experience games together. You and me know, as we said, back with the Forza Horizon 5 review, it got a 10 out of 10 from IGN. Now, if I came out and did a review just like IGN did, I too would possibly make this mistake. I would say this is one of the best games. It does everything you would want, everything you would expect from a racing game. And then it would launch and we would have server problems. We would find out that it is the same game. How do we tell people that it's the same game when we improve the score on each version? Now it's this one has a 10. You can bet me a million pounds. Okay, probably not that much. Let's not go unrealistically here. That The next version of Forza Horizon is probably also going to get a 10. And that is because... How do you negate points from a game that does everything that you kind of expect from the series and it just adds another feature each time? If that, it just polishes another feature each time. How do you give it negative points? Because you can't. This is also where the point system w fails in that you, you already did a good game with Forza Horizon 4. The only reason this got a 9.6 is probably because they knew they were going to do another one. But they, what, what happens when they do 20 more that are all at least as good as Forza Horizon 5? But that's just, that's just another tangent to talk about. Now, again, because it looks like I'm bullying IGN, we're going to switch over to Polygon. Another very reputable source, as you can imagine. Uh, this got a 4.5 for the crew. And something that's interesting about the crew is, again, it doesn't align with what the racing game community wants in reviews because they tell games like Need for Speed and the crew that fix issues with Forza Horizon's format, they are then penalized for exactly doing this, what we're requesting. We should as the consumers long-term realistically have some form of a focus. I understand that the people, the realists that they want to get new people and keep us at the same time. So to cater towards us is a different thing entirely because we're looking long-term. We're playing these same games for genuinely a year plus. Most people dip their toes in, and this has been pretty clear with Forza Horizon 5, that they will play not even finish the introduction and then it gets 20 million players, which is fine. But most people are not just looking for a numbers game like that. If you think about it, yes, we make the most money for them. We will buy the next game, but that's where the issue lies. We will probably already buy the next, we're already sold on the next 20 installments. New people are not. It's a weird one. And, and this is where the review scores and every it just does not help our case. And which is why, again, we decided to go against it. We're going to go over to IGN's review of the crew again. Uh, the crew is a truly massive and packed uh, with racing, 
but it's let down its dated appearance and frustrating AI. Where again do we draw the line in that both of those aspects in their summary were updated over time. They were fixed. The crew had the best updates possible. But of course, the IGN article and review will never mention anything about post-launch support, which if you are purchasing this game after launch, which is quite likely when you're searching reviews up for a game that's three years old, two years old, one years old, then you come across this page and you may just fully avoid it. But they should open, they should come out running. They should be, the game should be at the best state at launch. But what about when Forza Horizon 5 launched? Obviously, they got an early review. You see where this is going? It's such a mess. And this is why we do not do review scores at all. It just doesn't really make any sense. So in this case, we seem to think that the media assumed the crew was just a bad game. It just didn't play very well. There were issues, things like that. Uh, and apparently that's the same with Saints Row. But why is it labeled as okay? This is where, again, we get to the, it's reviewed by another person. You understand where this is all going. Review, review scores are essentially stupid. I hate them. And uh, that is why we don't do them. And it's why even though people say, oh, need for speed, 10 out of 10, right? I would say no. That's just not the case.